Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Sing to the Lord, sing a new song. We gather tonight, and having sung a very old a song to get us started tonight from the 5th century, we gather for our Christmas celebration, carols through the centuries and around the world. We'd like to invite you to stand with us as we sing 182 Good Christian Men Rejoice. Let's stand as we sing. sing a new song, the song of Jesus' birth. And even as we talk this morning about Christ being born again in us anew, it is our prayer that as we begin this holy week that we would experience Christ's birth in our lives anew and afresh each and every day. Speak to us tonight, Lord, through your word, through the carols that have been written through the centuries and around the word. May they be special to us tonight in a new way, in a fresh way. And as we gather and as we hear the story again, may you indeed be born in us again. We give thanks for all that you have done. We give thanks for the gift of Jesus on Christmas. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite you to be seated, and most of our program tonight will uh, carry on without any introduction, but we'll begin today with a medley of carols that Chaplain Mike Griggs is going to share with us. Mike.
This is a family medley that if we were sitting around at home back in Alabama that we might sing, some that would be known to all of us. <laughs> Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us through shadows dim, leading the ones who have gone on before. You know it too, huh? Like leading the wise men on the way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory it dawns, leading the light to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Old toy trains, Old toy tracks, little girl dogs Coming from a sack Carried by a man dressed in white and red Little ones, don't you think it's time you were in bed? Close your eyes Listen to the sky All is calm, all is well To hear old Kris Kringle and the jingle bells Bring in little boy trains, little boy tracks And little girl dogs Coming from a sack Carried by men dressed in white and red Little ones, don't you think it's time you were in bed? Little boys, don't you think it's time you were in bed? Little girls, don't you think it's time you got to bed? Christmas in Dixie it's snowing in the pines Merry Christmas from Dixie And to all the world tonight But up in Chicago The kids are out of school In Motown it's real busy the people's on the move But way down in Memphis Graceland's all in lights So Merry Christmas to all the world And peace on earth tonight Christmas in Dixie it's snowing in the pines Merry Christmas from Dixie To all the world tonight And from Cape Elizabeth Church of the Nazarene We say Merry Christmas tonight Now help me with this Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, 
come let us oh come let us yes oh come let us sung those songs in New England Yankee churches before, but <laughs> it's all right, brother. Thanks for, thanks for bringing a taste of home with us. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, hymnals, if you would, 186 will we'll go across the big pond to Poland and sing a traditional Polish carol, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. You can remain seated as we sing two verses of Infant Holy. Still in the fifth century, St. Augustine wrote these words. Let the just rejoice, for their justifier is born. Let the sick and infirm rejoice, for their savior is born. Let the captives rejoice, for their redeemer is born. Let the slaves rejoice, for their master is born. Let free men rejoice, for their liberator is born. Let all Christians rejoice, for Jesus Christ is born.
The Gospel reading is Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first sentence, census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, before we sing this next song, some of you are going to hear the, the opening tune, and you're going to say, well, that's an Easter song, and Cat Stevens made that popular. And, uh, well, yes and yes, but no, actually, the words we read for the Christmas tune are the original words uh, for the tune that you're familiar with, or at least the, the first words that were written as a hymn to go along with this tune. The Easter tune didn't come until a little bit later. So Child in the Manger, 188. Child in the manger, infant of Mary, outcast and stranger, Lord of all, child who inherits all our transgressions, all our It's a very, it's very traditional, once again from Luke. Um, but the words are more contemporary than what we're used to. This is the uh, new international version, which is from the mid-1980s, as opposed to the fifth century. This is Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. That night, some shepherds were in the fields nearby watching their sheep. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining around them, and they became very frightened. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news that will be a great joy to all the people. Today, your Savior was born in, a in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in pieces of cloth and lying in a feeding box that we often call the manger. Then a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel, praising God and saying, give glory 
to the God in heaven and on earth. Let there be peace among the people who please God. When the angels left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a feeding box. When they had seen him, they did what the angels had said about, they told what the angels had said about the child. Everyone was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured these things and continued to think about them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God and, and thanking him for everything they had seen and heard. It had been just as the angel had told them. I wanted to sing a French carol tonight, but most of us don't know French. And Oh Holy Night's really hard to sing congregationally. And then I remembered that this one was French. So we paired it with the scripture lesson we just heard. 190 angels we have heard on high. Let's stand. We need to stand while we sing this.
It was Christmas Eve. And although it was still afternoon, lights had begun to appear in the shops and houses of the little Russian village, for the short winter day was nearly over. Excited children scurried indoors, and now only muffled sounds of chatter and laughter escaped from closed shutters. Old Papa Panov, the village shoemaker, stepped outside his shop to take one last look around. The sounds of happiness, the bright lights, and the faint but delicious smells of Christmas cooking reminded him of past Christmas time when his wife had still been alive, and his own children little. Now they had gone. His usually cheerful face, with the little laughter wrinkles behind the round steel spectacles, looked sad now. But he went back indoors with a firm step, put up the shutters, and set a pot of coffee to heat on the charcoal stove. Then, with a sigh, he settled in his big armchair. Papa Panov did not read, but tonight he pulled down the big old family Bible, and slowly tracing the lines with one forefinger, he read again the Christmas story. He read how Mary and Joseph, tired by their journey to Bethlehem, found no room for them at the inn, so that Mary's little baby was born in the cowshed. Oh dear, oh dear, exclaimed Papa Panov. If only they had come here, I would have given them my bed, and I could have covered the baby with my patchwork quilt to keep him warm. He read on about the wise men who had come to see the baby Jesus, bringing him splendid gifts. Papa Panov's face fell. I have no gift that I could give him, he thought sadly. Then his face brightened. He put down the Bible, got up, and stretched his long arms to the shelf high up in his little room. He took down a small, dusty box and opened it. Inside was a perfect pair of tiny leather shoes. Papa Panov smiled with satisfaction. Yes, they were as good as he had remembered. The best shoes he had ever made. Shoes he had made for his baby. I should give him those, he decided, as he gently put them away and sat down again. He was feeling tired now, and, and the further he read, the sleepier he became. The print began to dance before his eyes so that he closed them just for a minute. In no time at all, Papa Panov was fast asleep. And as he slept, he dreamed. He dreamed that someone was in his room and he knew at once, as one does in dreams, who the person was. It was Jesus. You have been wishing that you could see me, Papa Panov, he said kindly. Then look for me tomorrow. It will be Christmas Day and I will visit you. But look carefully, for I shall not tell you who I am. When at last Papa Panov awoke, the bells were ringing out and a thin light was filtering through the shutters. Bless my soul, said Papa Panov. It's Christmas Day. He stood up and stretched himself, for he was rather stiff. Then his face filled with happiness as he remembered his dream. This would be a very special Christmas after all, for Jesus was coming to visit him. How would he look? Would he be a little baby as at that first Christmas? Would he be a grown man, a, a carpenter, or the great king that he is, God's son? He must watch carefully the whole day through so that he recognized him however he came. Papa Panov put on a special pot of coffee for his Christmas breakfast, took down the shutters, and looked out the window. The street was deserted. No one was stirring yet. No one except the road sweeper. He looked as miserable and dirty as ever, and well he might. Whoever wanted to work on Christmas Day, and in the raw, cold, and bitter freezing mist of such a morning. Papa Panov opened the shop door, letting a thin stream of cold air. Come in, he shouted across the street cheerily. Come in and have some hot coffee.
toffee to keep up the cold. The sweeper looked up, scarcely able to believe his ears. He was only too glad to put down his broom and come into the warm room. His old clothes steamed gently in the heat of the stove, and he clasped both red hands round the comforting warm mug as he drank. Papa Panov watched him with satisfaction, but every now and then his eyes strayed to the window. It would never do to miss his special visitor. Expecting someone? The sweeper asked at last. So Papa Panov told him about his dream. Well, I hope he comes, the sweeper said. You've given me a bit of Christmas cheer I never expected to have. I'd say you deserve to have your dream come true. And the sweeper actually smiled. When he had gone, Papa Panov put on cabbage soup for his dinner, then went to the door again, scanning the street. He saw no one. But he was mistaken. Someone was coming. The girl walked so slowly and quietly, hugging the walls of shops and houses, that it was a while before he noticed her. She looked very tired, and she was carrying something. She drew nearer, he could see that it was a baby, wrapped in a thin shawl. There was such sadness in her face and in the pinched little face of the baby that Papa Panov's heart went out to them. Won't you come in? he called, stepping outside to meet them. You both need a warm by the fire and a rest. The young mother let him shepherd her indoors to the comfort of the armchair. She gave a big sigh of relief. I'll warm some milk for the baby, Papa Panov said. I've had children of my own. I can feed her for you. He took the milk from the stove and carefully fed the baby from a spoon, warming her tiny feet by the stove at the same time. She needs shoes, the cobbler said. But the girl replied, I can't afford shoes. I've got no husband to bring home money. I'm on my way to the next village to get work. Sudden thought flashed through Papa Panov's mind. He remembered the little shoes he had looked at last night. But he had been keeping those for Jesus. He looked again at the cold little feet before him and made up his mind. Try these on her, he said, handing the baby and the shoes to the mother. The beautiful little shoes were a perfect fit. The girl smiled happily, and the baby gurgled with pleasure. You've been so kind to us, the girl said when she got up with her baby to go. May all your Christmas wishes come true. But Papa Panov was beginning to wonder if his very special Christmas wish would come true. Perhaps he had missed his visitor. He looked anxiously up and down the street. There were plenty of people about, but they were all faces he recognized, neighbors going to call on their families. They nodded and smiled and wished him Happy Christmas. And there were some beggars, and Papa Panov hurried indoors to fetch them hot soup and a generous hunk of bread, hurrying out again in case he missed the important stranger. All too soon the winter dusk fell. When Papa Panov next went to the door and strained his eyes, he could no longer make out the passers-by. Most were home and indoors by now anyway. He walked slowly back into his room at last, put up the shutters, and sat down wearily in his armchair. So it had just been a dream after all. Jesus had not come. And all at once he knew he was no longer alone in the room. This was not a dream, for he was wide awake. At first he seemed to see before his eyes the long stream of people who had come to him that day. He saw again the old road sweeper, the young mother and her baby, and the beggars he had fed. As they passed, each whispered, Didn't you see me, Papa Panov? Who, who are you? he called out, bewildered. Then another voice answered him. It was the voice from his dream, the voice of Jesus. I was hungry, and you fed me, he said. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was cold, and you warmed me. 
I came to you today in every one of those you helped and welcomed. And all was quiet and still, only the sound of the big clock ticking. A great peace and happiness seemed to fill the room, overflowing Papa Panov's heart, until he wanted to burst out singing and laughing and dancing with joy. So he did come, after all, was all that he said. And that is the story of Papa Panov's special Christmas Day. We are reminded that Jesus came to us in poor and humble circumstances. And so we sing this traditional Welsh carol, All Poor Men and Humble. Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 through 7. And in the Bible in front of you, it's on page 1072. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. <clears throat> on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For all in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them. <clears throat> The bar across their shoulders, the old, the rod of their obsessor. Every warrior's boot used in the battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. <clears throat> and the government will be on his shoulders. 
And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. For that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
Savior born in Bethlehem so many years ago. Be born anew and afresh in your heart tonight, this week, as you celebrate the coming of the Christ child, and as you look for Jesus in the world around you, look for the brokenness, look for the poverty, and look for the ways in which you can reach out and share the hope, the joy, the peace, and the love of Christmas. Indeed, receive this blessing, this benediction on you tonight as you're dismissed. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Merry, Merry Christmas.